Hello everybody, today I'll be reacting to How Ukraine Changed the Power Balance in the Black Sea, documentary by Kings and Generals. Definitely check the video out, first link in the description, definitely check Kings and Generals out, they're an amazing channel. And I really like their cover of the Ukraine war. Um, not yet. And I will definitely react to any future installment of their Ukraine series on this channel. And yeah, my overall knowledge um, for the Black Sea quite limited to be honest L like i know that the russian Navy black sea fleet is in very proper condition overall like i've watched the video but uh, i forgot who it was but like i was thinking of the moskva and jesus christ that ship shouldn't have ever been like good to see uh but yeah they'll tell us now i guess so yeah let's do this Since the Russian invasion of Ukraine on February 24th, 2022, it's much of the fighting yellow. has been conducted on land and in the air. But in many ways, the Black Sea is one of the core reasons for the war itself. While there has been yes. little ship-to-ship -ship fighting. Uh, the, the Black Sea shore was one of the objectives at the start of the war. Russia went after it hard. Like, like they really tried with Nikolaev. They tried to talk. The Russian Black Sea Fleet was tasked with a critical role in the Russian offensive, while the Ukrainian Navy, small by comparison, until recently has struggled to challenge its neighbor directly. In this video, we will talk about the overall situation in the Black Sea and how the ongoing war possibly changed the balance of power for decades to come. Today well, yes, we can Russia's also help you Black get a grip on geopolitics, fucked. or specifically the geo part, with a brilliant look at the board on which the game takes place. It's Earth, miniaturized and put on display. I actually have one of those in my room. In your home by our sponsors, Mova Globes. These globes rotate Mova. seemingly of their own accord with no ah. power source. That's I don't because have they one absorb of those. solar energy from the room's ambient light to power a magnetic rotation system hidden inside, meaning you get a dynamic rotating globe with no fuss whatsoever. The if it seems a little like too it? good, that's just because it's newly developed technology with an ultra low friction motor and something called micro volume fluid levitation. Basically, really Mova Globes just hell, work though. on their own and look good doing it. I don't think As I'll you buy one. probably noticed, it but yeah, doesn't actually want... need to be a globe of Earth. Check they out have plenty of other planets to choose from and okay, even a few cool. things that aren't planets, with over 40 designs in all. Whatever you choose, Mova Globes make for a great decoration and a cool gift for the person who has everything. Get 10% off a 6 or 8.5 inch Mova Globe uh, by using our code KINGSANDGENERALS at MovaGlobes.com. The Russian Black Sea Fleet is based in the Crimean port city of Sevastopol and has responsibility for the Black yes. Sea, the Sea of Azov and the Mediterranean Sea. Although access to- Do they have like even somewhat of a present there? To the Mediterranean from the Black Sea for any Russian naval ships is currently prohibited by the terms of the 1936 Montreux Convention, which Turkey is currently yeah. enforcing. We will note that yeah, Turkey wasn't allowing uh, Russian ships like into the Black Sea. Passage of Russian warships, which are already part of the Black Sea fleet, from the Mediterranean to the Black Sea is permitted, as they are considered to be returning to their home port. This condition prevents ships from being transferred from other Russian fleets to augment naval strength in the Black Sea region. The Black Sea Fleet's okay, offensive power, since the know, sinking of the cruiser Moskva by the Ukrainians on the 14th of April 2022, is centered on five guided missile frigates, two of them Soviet-era Krivek class- By the class way, I, I don't know much about like modern day naval stuff either. ...ships, commissioned in the 1980s, and three Krivak 5 class ships, each commissioned in the last 10 years. Okay. These newer frigates are built around their ability to carry and launch Caliber and Onyx cruise missiles. Since the loss of yeah. the Moskva, the Fregat M2M air search radars have also been used to track and monitor air traffic in the combat areas in the south of Ukraine. The other offensive arm of the fleet is the three improved Kilo class and one Kilo class diesel attack submarines currently active with the fleet. Okay. There are seven Kilo or improved Kilo class boats registered to the Black Sea Fleet, but two are in a maintenance cycle, while one is currently. As I said before, I don't know much about like 
modern day naval stuff, that's not a lot of ships. Currently deployed in the Mediterranean, basing itself from Tarsus in Syria. These submarines are equipped with caliber. Yeah, right, that would make, uh, like, sense. The, like, Russia is big in and Syria. And Onyx cruise missile. That is Syria, I'm pretty sure it's Syria. Not Lebanon. And represent a strategic deterrence in the region. The Black Sea Fleet also supports a series of Alligator and Rapucha 1 and 2 class assault ships designed for conducting oh, yeah. large-scale amphibious landings. Yeah, ships, Attacks by Ukrainian forces in February and May of 2022 report yeah, right. did, did you do a drone check on Sevastopol sometime back on the harbor? ...having disabled two of these ships. However, Russia continues to list them as available for action. So they probably the six assault sunk. ships registered to the Black Sea Fleet have been augmented by five assault ships from the Baltic Fleet and one from the Northern Fleet all of which passed through the Dardanelles before they were closed by Turkey. These oh, major warships oh. are augmented by a series of missile corvettes from the Degach and Buyan M-Class, equipped with caliber cruise missiles, but designed for littoral combat, providing close-in support during landing operations. <sighs> Among the various support vessels deployed by the Black Sea Fleet oh, sorry, um, is the Ivan Kurs, a new Yuri Ivanov-class SIGINT collections vessel I wasn't paying attention to all the content. Um, I'm, I'm a bit... Uh, with right caliber now. cruise missiles. Not but motivated. designed for littoral combat, providing... Oh, that is littoral combat. ...close in support during landing operations. Uh, yeah, Among the various support vessels deployed by the Black Sea Fleet is the Ivan Kurs, a new Yuri Ivanov-class SIGINT collections vessel designed for yeah. intelligence gathering, surveillance, communications, electronic warfare, and fleet management. Yeah, it seems like something The sensitive. Ukrainian Navy is, by comparison, very small, consisting largely of patrol craft mostly laid down during the Soviet era. Few I of these ships have any ship-to-ship -ship missile capability and rely on autocannons, close-in weapon systems, and mounted machine guns for both defense and offensive capability. Yeah, that's, that's like, even with my limited knowledge of it that's pretty outdated um uh, yeah i just read this as just how um little knowledge of like modern day navy i, I don't know what half the shit means the ukrainian navy is augmented but yeah it makes sense like um you can probably just country afford a huge navy because that's a pretty expensive thing to have. by ships of the ukrainian sea guard and the border patrol service and include a pauk class asw corvette as well as a mixture of Stenker and Schemmel fast attack ships, yeah. all originally built in the Soviet era. Fair the United States has promised accelerated delivery of new ships for both the Navy and the Sea Guard, but these are all expected to be smaller ships. patrol boats, suitable yeah. for littoral uh, uh, and riverine hit and run engagements. Sense. NATO presence sense. in the Black Sea is mainly composed of ships from three countries. Probably like. Like, yeah, Turkey, Bulgaria, Romania. Though I don't know how big of a fleet Romania and Bulgaria have, though Turkey probably is a decently large one. Countries, Romania, Bulgaria, and Turkey. The Turkish Navy comprises the largest NATO force in the region, composed of a mix of 12 diesel-electric Type 209 boats of German design, meant for anti-ship oh, warfare, 16 frigates, including eight Gabia-class ships, that's considerably large already in Russia as in the Black Sea. Which are modernized Oliver Hazard Perry class so I don't know, like, originally built for are. the US Navy and designed for both anti-ship and anti-submarine warfare, yeah. armed with both Sea Sparrow and Harpoon missiles, as well as Mark 46 or Mark 50 ASW torpedoes. The Harpoon missiles are in the process of being replaced by Turkish-designed at major sea skimming anti-ship missiles which have a range of at least uh, 250 kilometers. What? Turkey can also contribute up to nine corvettes for NATO duty, designed for both ASW and littoral combat. The Turkish Navy includes over 30 amphibious warfare ships, including two Bayraktar LSTs, giving Turkey the ability to move and land Turkey is a, they have a large ship navy, Christ. troops and armor within the region. Romania is able to augment this force with several frigates and corvettes, designed around ASW combat. What does several mean? But with full ship-to-ship -ship combat capability. Bulgaria similarly offers the same type of force disposition of older but refurbished Belgian frigates and Soviet-era corvettes. Belgian frigates? Damn, what well, militaries are weird, no Both the Romanian Navy and the Bulgarian Navy offer a number of minesweeping ships, 
deemed of crucial importance in the Black Sea theater of operations yeah, Black sea in light big. of both the Russian and Ukrainian Navy's propensity to use sea mines in the area. Makes sense. Crucially, the ships of the Turkish Navy are free to move through the Dardanelles and the Bosphorus at will. While many ships of the Turkish fleet are based from ports in the Mediterranean Sea, they have the ability to be redeployed into the Black Sea as yeah, necessary. The Navy, Both sense. the Romanian and uh, Bulgarian navies are based in the Black Sea itself, making them a permanent force in the theatre. No other NATO naval sense. ships are able to enter the Black Sea at this time, largely fixing the naval strengths in the region. Some of the That's earliest Ukrainian naval losses in the Probably something out like balance of regional war power. occurred in the opening weeks of the Russian invasion. During the Battle of Berdyansk, Russian forces captured several Ukrainian ships, including a Matka-class missile boat and several Gyuza M-class artillery boats. There is yeah. still some dispute over whether would, it would be really difficult to like, get ships out of the Sea of Azov is Ukraine, more like pretty much impossible, because like all the seas control persons. These ships have been captured or sunk. In addition, the Good flagship people. of the Ukrainian Navy, the Krivak 3 class frigate Hetman Sahedachny, itself due to begin an extensive refit, was scuttled while still in port in Mykolaiv. This was done to prevent the ship from being captured by the Russians. Makes sense. The early months Seems of the like war saw the most naval action, with the Black Sea Fleet dominating proceedings. This included the bombardment and capture of Snake Island a key outpost near the Romanian border, yeah, from which control of ships island. entering and leaving the vital Ukrainian port of Odessa could be exerted. Amphibious landings against the port were anticipated but never materialized, likely due to increased pressure on Russian forces in well, other yeah. areas of like, naval assault, that seems like something really difficult to do. The war. On April 13th, land-based Ukrainian forces mounted an attack on the Slava-class cruiser Moskva whose long-range radar and air defense system was providing protection for Russian ships operating off the Ukrainian coast. The successful attack, which is believed to have been made by using aerial drones as a distraction, struck the Moskva with two Didn't know that. R-360 Neptune cruise missiles. Oh. These missile strikes appear to have ignited onboard munitions, causing an explosion which overturned the vessel, sinking it. There has been little offensive use of Russia's Black Sea Fleet since the sinking of the cruiser Moskva on April 14th. That'd be difficult with like anti -ship, Ukraine anti ship defenses and like them overall not being that useful, really. The threat posed by the Ukrainian Neptune anti ship missiles, as well as Western supplied Harpoon anti ship missiles, has forced the fleet to largely remain at anchor inside Sevastopol or to operate well offshore or even behind the Crimean Peninsula where their effectiveness and ability to support operations on land are greatly diminished. The well, submarine yeah. force, which should be able to fulfill its mission as a cruise missile platform, has been more muted than expected, being involved in some missile strike operations, but as the force least at risk from Ukrainian retaliation, performance has been quite subdued. While active seaborne threats seem to be quite minimal in the region, there have been, and continue to be, concerns over more passive threats spilling over from the war, specifically that posed by drifting naval mines. Both what? Russian and Ukrainian what? forces have deployed naval Imagine just the beach turned in like you're in a mine plus a blah. Naval mines to deny access to regions of water. Makes sense. This includes the deployment of mines by the Russians to aid in enforcing the attempted blockade of Odessa while the Ukrainians have deployed their own mines in the same region to help in anti-invasion proceedings. Some of these mines Damn, imagine you just both mine the waters of the same port. Mines have broken <laughs> free and are drifting on open currents, posing a threat to shipping in the Black Sea, with the threat being taken seriously even through the Bosphorus and Dardanelles. NATO minesweepers are on alert as a result, looking to find and deactivate any potential threats and yeah, have been saying, called into action yeah, multiple yeah. times in the western area of the Black Sea. With the loss of the air protection supplied by Moskva, Russian control over Snake Island, crucial to maintaining any type of blockade of Odessa, became more and more tenuous, including... I'm pretty sure the Russians lost, uh, lost an island already, did they? I think they did. ...drone and precision missile strikes on Russian resupply craft trying to reinforce the garrison there. On June 30th, Ukraine announced it had regained control of the yeah, island, okay. while the Russians claimed their withdrawal as a gesture of goodwill. 
dealt. This withdrawal had the effect of greatly diminishing the ability of the Russian fleet to blockade Ukrainian shipping. Since August 1st, a United Nations brokered deal has been in place, allowing Ukrainian export of grain from yeah, the, the ports of Odessa, yeah. Chornomosk, and Yushni Pivdenyu. Ships transporting grain are able to navigate an established corridor and must then stop in Istanbul for inspection by monitors from Russia, Ukraine, Turkey and the United Nations in order to ensure they are not transporting additional items. As part of this deal, the Ukrainians have agreed not to use the established corridor in the Black Sea to stage attacks against Russian ships and targets. Makes sense. October 29th saw what may possibly be eventually seen as a game changer. Uh, do you want to take on the Sevastopol port? Question mark. ...moment in naval operations. Ukrainian forces deployed seven uncrewed surface vessels, or USVs, towards the protected Crimean port of Sevastopol. The seven naval drones, approximately the size of a small canoe, penetrated the harbour and caused damage to a frigate and a minesweeper. While the damage was minimal, the impact of this attack forced the Russians to add extra layers of security to the ships and the port, and effectively lock the entire Black Sea fleet away, rendering it useless. Damn. Overall, the naval situation in the Black Sea since the Russian invasion of Ukraine in February of 2022 has been surprising. While it was expected that the Russian Black Sea fleet would dominate the Ukrainian navy, which it rapidly did, the effective and innovative use of the weapons at hand by the Ukrainians has subsequently left the Russian Navy in Crimea a useless liability. We don't expect an active shooting war between the NATO countries and Russia in the Black Sea, but it is clear that the Ukrainians damaged the Russian Black Sea fleet to an extent that it can't impose its will anymore. No, they can't. Even the NATO fleets that are right now in the Black Sea are sufficient to keep the Russians at bay, so the expectation is that the grain deal will be continued no matter what happens. The continuation of the Makes conflict sense, in guess. this configuration will continue to degrade the Russian naval capabilities in the region and only strengthen the positions of the NATO countries. More videos on the unprovoked and illegal war Putin's Russia wages on Ukraine are on the way, so make sure Very to good. subscribe. I'll be watching and reacting to them. Also, subscribe to Games in General. It's like the videos, watch the videos, they're amazing. I'm gonna do more of them in the future when I have a bit more time. Currently, there are many doing music because, you know, I can more easily put out a lot of videos. I wouldn't tell, like I don't have the time to upload a video this long every day, sadly. But yeah, um, I'm also really enjoying the Sabaton stuff. So yeah, uh, bye bye.